My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. This is where we talk about some important stuff. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're coming in so we can get started. Hi, my name is Caroline Sertes, and I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur. I run my own business in early childhood education and care, and I have a long day care center. And awesome. I also do some charity works around. I saw an article on your on your post from God knows a couple of months ago. Maybe it was a long time ago. Did you have any hand to do with federal government stopping giving money to a lot of places that were ripping off parents? Talk about that a little bit because that's very very important, especially for people that are putting their children and 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 their family with childcare that they may not know if they're doing the right thing or not. <laughs> yes, that was a couple of, I think, a year ago or something like that, was it? Oh, yeah. That's right. I did, um, I was um, actually talking about it because I realized uh, that um, childcare industry itself, there is some um, question marks around that the government is not quite aware of. And um, it starts from education part of it and from the educators down to the um, the early childhood education and care of the children themselves. So there are times when um, people overcharge and people not giving the right service of what they actually, the parents are not paying right for uh, value for money. And um, these are the things that the government, I understand, would not see. And um, only if you're working in the industry would be the eyes for them. And I just wanted to share my experience and view the industry with them. Awesome. So how important is early childhood care for parents to be aware of? Because I think the first couple of years are extremely important, if not the first seven to 10 years, extremely important for any baby's future when they grow up. So what are some of the, what are some of the challenges we should watch out for? Oh, well, um, Early childhood is uh, education and care is some an industry that actually has been, um, I can say, underestimated the value that it contributes to our society. But I, with the COVID nineteen, I actually can say that there is some actually realization. Thank goodness, it took something like that. That um, we are part of the community that offers a service that actually is valuable to you our families, the community, and also to keep the parents working. Not only that, but early childhood education and care is a place that is a safe environment that gives a child a potential to become productive and involved and confident adults. Because when you start preparing a child when they're young, the first crucial time or best learning time for it. Uh, and any, any person is when you're little, we absorb so much and people don't actually understand that. And those are the times that we actually get, uh, sort of get, get carried away and miss because you prepare a child to go to school. We give them social skills and we give them confidence. We give them um, ability to interact with others, um, the peers as well. So there is quite a lot, independent skills. So all those things, uh, things that you can find in early childhood education and care that provides by educators. And that can only be given in an environment like that. Especially yeah, I, I today. Agree with that. And that's why I think parents need to be involved when it comes to, when it comes to that. I think they need to know what they're actually, how their child is going to react in the future is dependent on that. That's why I think it's a very serious manner. It, it should be taken very seriously. Like you oh, cannot absolutely. be taken lightly. That's our that's our future. These are absolutely. the future of our society and our planet. So the more confident they are. So here's my other question. Can you give us like one or two tips for parents that do work? What can they do that you think will have a big effect in their their, their child behavior for future? especially with confidence? Well, 
one of the things that uh, parents, um, if I've got your question right, is that one of the things that the parents should look at or um, understand is that by having a child to be um, starting to early learning centre before school, you're actually developing that independence, autonomy in a child's and um, social skills, development, well-being. There is not a big dramatic when you actually um, or a big change when you go in from suddenly you're starting to go to school. An early childhood education and care centre is where parents have a choice to actually start learning or taking a child slowly. It's not about us as a parent. I'm a parent of two boys. And I realised it actually helped me quite a lot. There were certain things I struggled with. And it's not easy to take your child to the centre. However, and, and, and leave it with your child with the strangers. However, that's some sacrifice that we have to do because our children at some stage, will they become adults, they will, we'll have to release them to the community. So this is a time for us to start preparing them. And that's why it's an early years learning and it lays a foundation or who will become, or what they will become in future. I agree with that 100%. I think having that, so, because you got to remember, some of these people, these these babies are going to grow up and they're going to become entrepreneurs. And if they don't have the self-confidence, that might not do well for our society. So here's my other question for you. When individuals start their own business, what are one or two tips that you could tell them uh, that you have faced and overcome that might actually give them a little bit of an insight of what it takes to start your own business? Well, things that actually happens is that um, you, have to, you have to have a dream, and that dream has to become a reality. And by come, becoming a reality, you have to put it into action, and you have to be determined. Uh, there is so many obstacles that we overcome, but... If you don't have a passion and you don't find the right um, the business or a career that you want to do, you will easily give up because of those challenges. So find your niche. Get into what you believe into and what you're passionate about. Um, for me, children have started a long time before I actually get into childcare and slowly getting to know how the services are offered. I find myself in a way that I can't give up. I feel like giving up is its not about me. I'm giving up on our future generation. So once you find yourself doing something you're passionate about, you go with it no matter what. You go with it. And don't, don't think that um, it's going to be a rocket science that's going to happen overnight. There's some challenges, but persist and stay in the zone. Know why you started. And also have a mentor. A mentor is always good because they've been there already. And they'll tell you that it was never easy because always we think that that person had it easy and you're trying to get where they are, not knowing the steps that they had to climb and how many times they fall back and then climb again. So once you keep that in mind that that's the way it is to success, there is some... KV corners, bumps, and everything like that. Uh, but I have to be determined, persist, and know what I'm looking for. To achieve that is the most important thing. And to stay in business when it's actually struggling is the most important thing for you to actually keep yourself going. I agree with that 100%. I think when it gets tougher, the rewards are much higher. Now, granted, sometimes you do need to throw the towel in. Sometimes you do need to move on and, and change it. But for predominantly majority of people, the, the harder the challenges, the more difficult they are, uh, the better rewards are going to be. Um, my other question for you is this. You mentioned mentor and coach. How do you see that whole entire concept of mentor and coach? Because a lot of individuals at a much higher age they're kind of not receptive or maybe they're not open-minded to getting somebody else's opinion because by getting someone else's opinion on what you're doing, that tells you that you're on the wrong path and you need to upgrade it and change it. So how do you kind of get over that where you do need to ask for help? Because I feel like a lot of older generation, they don't like to ask for help. 
That's quite broad, uh, true. And I can tell you this is that uh, you have to be open minded. One of the things is that you have to be open minded. Allow yourself to learn because learning is never end. We constantly learning. And this is my philosophy in childcare. We learn from children, we learn from our, our, our fellow educators, we learn from parents. We keep on growing. So once you say um, you're not open to mentorship, you're actually denying yourself knowledge to your work, to your success, because you will make mis you have an opportunity to actually res um, cave away from those mistakes that your mentor did by trying to open up and be, you can't do business if you don't want to open up. You have to be open-minded. I agree with that. I think that's one of the biggest traits that you need to have, that if you're open-minded, I think it gets you further out in life. You know, and sometimes you might, you know, you might do some mistakes. You might some, you know, but it's a learning curve. You got to, you know, Absolutely. right now in life is called failure, but down the line it's called experience. So you got to experience all that. But if you can shortcut that and get a mentor and a coach, definitely makes a big difference. Oh, yeah. I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Hopefully we get to do more. Stay safe. Looking forward to it. Thank you. I'll thank you for your interest. I'll talk to you, you soon. Talk to you thank soon. You. Bye bye. Bye.